Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to a Boxing Day end of the year Strange Love Live Tech Special. I'm your host, Cami Chaos, and as always, I'm joined by Dr. Normal. Hello, everybody. Our our little studio. It's a little sad and empty this evening. And dark. And dark. It's like someone forgot to pay the power bill and we don't have all of our lights. And um, there's an empty place on the couch where someone should have been. That's right. But it's Boxing Day, so we're going to do the kind of things that we do on Boxing Day. And since we're not big, you know, crazy shoppers, we've decided that it's time to pack up the Strange Love Christmas tree and set it aside for another year. We go buy a little strange love Christmas tree. Oh, but look, it's not so empty after all. We have our guest, the silicon florist. Hello, Mr. Rick Tarosi. Hello. You're here. You're here. I am here. I'm looking away from you for some reason, but I'm here. <laughs> I don't know why you won't look at me. Can we consider you I'm a hostile, shy. It You're might a hostile be the, guest? You might be scared of my leopard print. I'm not sure. Um, yeah. Hello, Rick. How are you? <laughs> okay, stop <laughs> petting the picture. <laughs> we need to thank Aaron Hockley for allowing us to use the teenage crush photo of Mr. Tarosi that we've <laughs> framed and put in our studio. I'm thinking it's a nice addition. I'm wondering if we should keep it. Yeah. So, sounds like a good idea. Maybe hang it on the wall after the show. Nice. <laughs> so the reason you are not here is because of Thonami. Yeah, because of the Thonami. Well, all Which the, is the direct the result roads, of the snow apocalypse. Right. All the roads around here are fine except for the one in my neighborhood. So there are about four blocks where you have to use chains to get out. And uh, I just didn't think it was wise to risk it tonight so i'm calling in unfortunately i wish i could be there because i still haven't gotten to sign the uh strange love live autograph board either and i was hoping to do that tonight but. i'm thinking about just carrying it around with me from now on so if i have nice. by chance run into you i'll just have it you know strapped to my back and you can sign it for us <laughs> <laughs> really we've asked you to come here tonight well you know in spirit, not in physical form, to talk about the major happenings of 2008 and what you think is coming for 2009. So let's start with the 2008 portion, because okay. chronologically that makes sense. Sure. And why don't you tell me your top 10 events or things or companies or whatever, the top 10 things that you remember from 2008. Okay. Um, I think to start it off, Easily the best and most memorable thing that happened this year for the at least the stuff that I kind of cover, I think was, you know, Vadoop was the was the big story mm -hmm. in terms of them moving to Portland and um, you know, the hiring of Scott Kaviton and all of that kind of thing. That that one story kind of stands out as something that really um you know it, it really brought the tech community together. Um, introduced a bunch of new people to the Portland tech community and was really something for us to kind of rally around as, uh, you know, just the, the fact that this company decided to move all of their employees to Portland because of what they saw happening here, I think is a is a testament to the community we've developed and and just, you know, really, really brave of them to do that. And they, um, they did it in a grand style as well. They did, yeah, and their whole Oregon Trail thing was a was a kick to watch too, where they basically videotaped the entire trip from is a road trip from Tulsa to Portland, and they did it in U-Haul trucks and with a big caravan and all kinds of things, and they live blogged it and videotaped it and all that kind of stuff, so you could kind of follow along with them and see the see the whole trip. Um, so that one that one's easily my number one. Um, and I don't know that any of the others I have are really in rank order, but that one to me, just the whole Vidoop that's story. That's the big and one. That's the big one. Okay. Um, I would say Shazow was another big one, I mm -hmm. think, in terms of just, you know, Portland kind of having having this uh, product come out that that 
people really kind of appreciated and started to use and and was you know it was local folks and they were doing something cool and and we all appreciated what they were doing and they did a really good job of kind of introducing it to the community and keeping it a portland tool for quite a while so um Shazau was easily right up there okay. um caligator another really cool tool um, I don't know that many, as many people have had the chance to use Caligator as Shazau, but um, just the fact that that's a total volunteer effort and they've created this amazing, um, if you haven't used it, Caligator is a calendar aggregator. Um, so it aggregates all the tech calendars in Portland, or you can add events to it just the same way you add stuff to upcoming, or you can cut, you can take a link from upcoming and feed it to Caligator and Caligator will go, oh, here's all the information on that event. Um, we'll go ahead and put that in the database. And it, just a really amazing project considering it's purely voluntary um, in terms of tech. I need to remember to come it, back to that because you go ahead and I'll bring that up later. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'll just kind of rifle through them here and then we can, if you want to stop me, feel free. Um, oh, excellent. A bunch of Legion of Tech stuff, obviously. Um, I think Ignite Portland uh, really came into its own this year. Uh, it started, you know, at the end of 2007 in October with the first one, and then the three they held this year were just amazing events. At, you know, the Baghdad, and those guys are just doing a phenomenal job. Bar Camp Portland, another. Amazing event put on by, and I'm going to, again, apparently I'm going to say amazing 12,000 times <laughs> like I usually do. Um, <laughs> Bar Camp Portland was, I think, 300, 325 people at that thing. Um, you know, and, and again, Legion of Tech, purely volunteers putting that on. And then I had another couple Legion of Tech events that were actually Legion of Talk events where... Um, Gary Vaynerchuk of Wine Library TV came to town and spent some time talking to us, and that was really memorable. Simply because after the after his talk was over, he spent time just hanging out with a bunch of Portland people and talking to them. And um, for those of you who don't know Gary, he's he's a very dynamic. Uh, He's got a very dynamic personality. He's kind of he's kind of in your face about things and just a really energetic guy. And it was really um, he, he's definitely internet famous. And it was really interesting to have him stick around and chat with folks after that event and get the chance to meet him again. Mark Shuttlesworth was the other Legion of Talk, the the guy behind Ubuntu, Ubuntu. and uh, having him come to town and and talk to folks was was again kind of one of those once-in-a-lifetime things for Portland. So I thought that was a big deal. In terms of things that that have kind of gone on week to week, I think Beer and Blog was uh, really, you know, kind of phenomenal, the way it came together and became the happy hour for the Portland tech community and continues to do that. I heard people showed up today for the last um, Beer and Blog of the year and that's something was, you know now that was today the unofficial last beer and blog today was the unofficial last one i heard there were a few people there um and then you know last week was the official the official official last one but again just you know the fact that we all get a chance to get together on a regular basis um, at the end of the week and catch up with one another whether, whether it has anything to do with blogging or not and now that that's, you know, there's one going on in Seattle, there's one going on in Corvallis, I've heard talk of one potentially in Boise, um, they're just kind of starting to spring up all over, so it's a it's a, an, a official franchise now. Same thing goes for Lunch 2.0 mm -hmm. in Portland, I thought that was, you know, another way to, um, those events were all memorable because we got to meet a bunch of a bunch of different companies we got to kind of see where they where they worked and and the types of people who worked there and we also got to see some people who we don't often see at events because it was during the day mm -hmm. and they could make it um, make it to those events I uh, I also put air sharing on there which I don't know if you guys are familiar with that I'm app not. but it it's an iPhone app that I have basically it on my iPhone. Do, you, you basically convert your iPhone into a hard drive, kind of a wireless hard drive, mm -hmm. and that's a company out of Vancouver, Washington, that built that. I think they had 
a million downloads of that app in just over a week. Wow. Which is crazy. And uh, just re a really sharp team over there that put that together. Um, I also kind of have um, Field Runners lumped in there, which I don't know if you guys have that iPhone app, but it's no, basically... No, but I know what that is. It's, it's a game. Yeah, it's a game. It's, it's a popular. tower. Yeah, tower defense game. It's very popular, very addictive. And um, they were named to the time top 10 video games of the year. I saw and that's that. that. That's any, that's like Xbox, Wii, mm -hmm. PlayStation. Any game at all. They, any game at all. And they were an iPhone game that was in there made right here in Portland. And then, you know, not to totally kiss your guys' ass, but I have Strange Love Live on there <laughs> as well. Because, I mean, in all seriousness, you guys have really um, done something for the community in terms of, you know, this is something we do. We, we go to beer and blog, we come home, you know, then later we get on we get on uh, Strange Love Live on Friday evenings and kind of gives us another chance to, you know, be, be at the back channel or, you know, actually listening to who's on the show for once. Um, it, it, it's just been a really, you guys have really come into your own this year and Thank I've you. been really appreciative of the show. So that's, I don't know if that's 10, but that's my, that's my best of 2008. At least. I think I just blushed as bright as I've seen you blush a few times, which is impressive <laughs> because I don't really do that. But thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> I, yeah, it's been, it's, you know, it's, it's really become a mainstay for, at least for me. I know I try and tune in every week and I know I see a lot of the same people tuning in every week. So um, you guys should be proud of what you've done. And I look forward to, to what you're going to do in 2009. I, I mean, and we should go. add, um, <laughs> I mean, well, this this kind of comes circular, but um, but you've, how long have you written The Silicon Florist? It's been a little over a year, right? A little over a year. We celebrated yeah. his birthday at, yeah. um, at Cube Space. Yeah, and that was, yep. um, yeah. what, uh, late summer, I think. Yeah, it's around August, mid-August is when I kind of gauge the you know, the epiphany of waking up at 2 a.m. and deciding that there needed to be some blog about the Portland tech scene. So let's ask Dr. Normal, what are your 10 things or 10-ish well, things from 2008? I was going to use that opportunity to say, I mean, you know, the, the Silicon Florist has really risen up in that last year as well. I, I mean, would this say, is, of course, I, I would say he, for those of you, you want to go get a sandwich or something while we do the he, kiss he, butt he kissed our best. portion let's kiss of his. the show. <laughs> Um, he really Some mutual admiration. He society. brings uh, the yeah. entire Portland tech community together. Have He's beer, kind of like a binding glue that brings everything, reports everything, right. and 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 shines little lights on things that people might not otherwise notice. Right, and 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 you can see that also with I think in addition to the Silicon Florist, what we see going on with the Read Write Web right yeah. now as well. Um, there's uh, quite a considerable. Portland contingent at My, Read Write Web at this point. I think point. part yeah. of that is because it's got a very heavy Portland presence. They report things outside of Portland. Obviously, they're you know global, but exactly Portland gets the benefit of Read Write Web's locality. <laughs> I mean, it, even if you can't pronounce it, like, <laughs> I had to say it slowly. Say it three times and take a drink. <laughs> um, read Write Web. Um, so, I mean, can you comment on that, too? What's going on over there? I mean, it's not... Uh, oh, I uh, forgot that Rick wrote... <laughs> Rick. Well, I, no, I mean, that's <laughs> totally my, the Rick that's my point. <laughs> and the new job wire, which was launched uh, just recently. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's really, you know, uh, Read Write Web was kind of one of those happy accidents that um, that fell in my lap. I'm kind of the, the night... I... I, I man the night, the night watchman so, yeah I'm the, I'm the night stringer so when <laughs> stories come in at night that's kind of what i deal with but you know marshall kirkpatrick who you guys have had on um doug coleman who i know is in the chat room you know nate uncle nate um a bunch of folks here in portland working on that publication uh frederick lardinois um here in portland as well he's the morning morning writer probably a lot of people see stuff that he's written up on Read Write Web. And, um, you know, just a, a really great team of people. And we just happen to be lucky that a lot of us live here in Portland. And, and it's good because um, it does give us a certain 
you know, like Cammy said, it gives us a certain kind of Portland vibe about the whole thing, even though we're covering a very national or international scope. And and so it's been a I it's been a learning experience for me. That's a totally different kind of blogging than than what I do or have done in the past. And so it's been a really good learning experience for me and that's a that's a great team from whom to learn. And thank you. I mean thank you for the compliments about Silicon Florist. I don't you know, I, I I don't. I feel like toward the end of the year, I kind of slacked off a little bit, and uh, and so I'm looking forward after recouping from vacation a little bit to kind of coming back into into Silicon Florist and really building it back up to what it was, and hope that hope that I can really do some more because I feel like I've I haven't been doing as much as I could here in the last couple of months. But we will we will work to fix that. So I'm thinking a couple other items in 2008. Um, someone did mention in the chat room, uh, Backfence PDX. Um, yep. Is kind of a big event. You're stealing my talking. I'm point. sorry. I was actually this. <laughs> this was this was your. Uh, this is what I was going to throw to you. What other uh, types of uh, events uh, have you seen, Cammy? I'm going to say anything that starts with a word and ends with camp mm -hmm. has been big in Portland. I don't know if that's, it's not just a local thing, but there's been so many camps here, and I think that um, not having had the opportunity to go to a lot of them, but kind of watching from the outside, I went to a few. Uh, it's interesting, and I think that a lot of them were so successful that they'll happen again in, in 2009. So I think that's going to be, I think that's something that got a lot stronger in 2008 and is going to be reoccurring. I think Backfence is kind of a little sensation in Portland, mm -hmm. and I think that's going really, really well. I've been to two of them, and they were phenomenal, and they've had to move to a larger venue, and I just think that uh, Melissa and Fran are doing a great job with those. Uh, I think that Legion of Tech is doing some really amazing stuff. And I hope that they continue to put on the kind of productions that they're going to, including Ignite. The Ignites are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, Ignite, you know, it started out, I'm not sure what city it started out. It's all over the country. I know Boise's having one on March 19th. Uh, I know that, I think Portland's is in February? Yeah, February, yeah. Uh, maybe February 19th. It's in February. Yeah. Uh, and and I, it's Seattle. Seattle was the first one that Seattle I was the first. heard about. I don't know if that was the very first, but that's I know the that's, first. Isn't I that knew where Josh of. got the idea? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, as Rick said earlier, the lunch 2.0s. So I think, um, it, it, and and the origins of so you were talking about uh, like WordCamp was very mm -hmm. successful this year. Um, we had a lot of fun and at helpful. Cyborg Camp as well. <laughs> Um, the, uh, so the origins of that were bar camp. Is that correct, Rick? Yeah. The kind of camp, the, this kind of, you know, camp referring to something that's an unconference or has some unconference elements to it. So basically, um, you know, there's, there's some, some portion of it that's unscheduled and that the attendees propose topics and schedule those topics during the course of the event itself. Those, those kind of that camp stuff is kind of what defines all uh, that kind of thing. I really like the hybrid between the two because for me, and maybe it's my attention span, it's I can't sit through an entire day of scheduled this and scheduled that and, and mm -hmm. no time to reflect and no f time to kind of, you know, consider other people's perspective on what's going on. And so the, the hybrid of the conference, unconference, makes it a lot easier. It makes it more individual. It makes it easier to... Uh, get out of it what you as a person want to get out of it. And I, really I, I agree. Yeah, I agree wholeheartedly. I have exactly the opposite problem. I find that if it's like bar camp is a good example. If it's a complete unconference, there's nothing scheduled, mm -hmm. then I find I find myself talking too much and listening too little because I, you, there's the option to participate, so I tend to participate mm -hmm. in those kind of events. And so I really like having the structured stuff where I can just listen and learn and not feel like feel like an obligation i definitely need both. constantly yeah, yeah. Is, the, is the success in portland because I, I i think oh, i am assuming that we're agreeing here that the uh camps have been uh, generally successful 
in Portland. Is part of that success um, the venues themselves, uh, the fact that Cube Space exists, or I believe, um, is it Souk? That- Souk. Yeah. As well. Souk's handled some of them as well, yeah. Um, I think it's I, I think it's a good cultural fit for Portland. I mean, it's just, you know, it's, if you think about the, some of the other events that I mentioned in the rundown, it's like beer and blog is kind of sometimes structured, but most of the time <laughs> not, you know, lunch 2.0 has a little bit of structure up front and then it's very unstructured. It's, you know, it just kind of seems to fit with the vibe. And the other thing is there are, you know, again, this moves into the kiss ass portion again. There are so many smart people in Portland that it seems ridiculous to force them to kind of sit and listen to somebody else talk the whole time when there are a lot of really intelligent people with a a lot of really good ideas that it works much better when they're in kind of a, a group dynamic where they can all talk and all lead and, you know, have arguments or have discussions or whatever that that dynamic just seems to work really well with our with our culture and people just kind of you know have glommed onto it and and you know it, to the point where it's a joke. I mean, I don't know what I can't remember the full campy camp bar campy. Camp oh yeah, camp the, the like yeah. 140 character hashtag. Right. Yeah. So I mean, and it's you know, but it's there's something. Well, and we're getting um, in 2009 recent changes camp, which um, was in Portland, and then I think uh, went down to maybe San Jose or something for a year, um, is coming back to Portland. And recent changes camp is the Wiki camp. Oh, um, I... So that that's going to be here in Portland. So we're, we're I, I would agree with you. I think we're going to see more of those. And we had Wear Camp here as well. I'm sure we'll have another one of those or another couple of those. Um, it's it, it it just really works here and and i think um we'll continue to see that format flourish here i know the open source bridge conference in the summer is planning to have some you know kind of unscheduled time as well that are that's kind of camp like as well so i i think it's a good dynamic i was just going to bring that up um we're going to get into kind of the 2009 and where things are going yeah. but yeah. um uh, you know, the dark side of 2008 um, was OzCon, correct? Yeah, um, I think that was that was kind of a not so not so much. Um, it was kind of one of those you just got you just got dumped by, you know, by that person you really liked, and we're like, whoa, what did I do wrong exactly? And, <laughs> why don't uh, you love me? Why don't you like me anymore? I always bring you flowers. Um, <laughs> it. And it was, and it was, and that sentiment was echoed not only by Portlanders, but by people who really enjoyed traveling to Portland during the summer. Um, you know, be that for have nice the summers. beer or the weather or whatever. There were there was this kind of, you know, vocal outcry of um, of people who were disappointed that OSCON that there wasn't going to be an open source conference in Portland and RailsConf. Um, which is, uh, you know, for Ruby on Rails developers, also mm-hmm. pulled out of Portland and is going to be like in Vegas next year. So those two, both O'Reilly um, shows, pulled out of town at the same time, and, and that kind of left a gap. And so Which blog her did not feel. <laughs> right, yeah, I was going to bring that one up yeah. as well as a blogger. Blog her. Blog her, her sorry. Yeah, Isn't yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't have that large did. enough facilities, apparently. Right. It's the hotel yeah. space, basically, that's killing us. Everybody wants um, to have everybody staying at the same hotel. Or they, they want, want everyone to at the block. venue to stay in the yeah. venue, yeah. Well, and, yeah, and, yeah. and when you're d- going to a large conference like that, that's basically where you want to be if you're a vendor or an attendee, right? You want to right. be in the complex where they have, you know, Vegas. I was recently in Dallas uh, a few months ago where they built a... Uh, the Gaylord Texan, which is a Las Vegas sized hotel with conference centers and, you know, mm-hmm. that, that essentially is competitive to, uh, to, uh, the Vegas hotels. So would you like me to say that again? <laughs> Take a drink. The Gaylord I'm like Texan. a teenage boy. Yeah. I can't handle it. Um, I thought of one thing we missed before we move on to 2009. I thought of one thing that kind of snuck in at the end of the year, um, which was the square. 
Yes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That to- those guys totally need credit for what yeah. they're doing. There. And I don't know about the guests they're booking on that hot box. <laughs> yeah, they're they're a little <laughs> they're a little lackadaisical on pulling in the big names. Don't just let anybody they're... on these days. I don't know. Get but back to the they... uh, uh, kissing <laughs> part. <laughs> But no, they, Rick, they've managed Rick to do something. Rick was a guest something. in the hot box, as it's called. They've yeah. managed to do something <laughs> that, that no other news station, at least in Portland, has even, I think, attempted to do with any seriousness. Right. And they've got Stephanie Strickland on Twitter and uh, Aaron, is it Weiss, Aaron? Aaron Weiss. Aaron Weiss. Who Aaron tweets Weiss. as, who as tweets live, at seven, live at 7. And also has his own the, Twitter yeah, account. He's the senior producer for mm-hmm. that show. Yeah, and and... I don't know if it's that they've made more of an effort or if they're just more personable, but they've done a really great job reaching out to the community and kind of stroking the Twitter peeps' egos. Yeah. I mean, I mean that's really what it amounts to is, oh, oh we, truly. we get yeah. to see ourselves on the news. Yay, us, yay, us, yay. Yeah, and they showed up at Beer and Blog and mm-hmm. hung out, for, you know, an, an hour or two at Beer and Blog, too. So, I mean, it's, um, yeah, they were more in my 2009 because they, they sure, came up right. late 2008, yeah. but um, you know, I think you're going to see a lot of copycats. I mean, they're an, they're an I owned agree. station, right? I mean, the Belo owns stations all over the Pacific Northwest, and so I, I think you're going to see this happen at a variety of stations. Yet, I don't think you're going to see anybody do it as successfully as these two have done so far. And and I think um, you're going to see them get. A lot of traction, um, and hopefully, you know, get a lot of influence by by pulling this off. And what I'm really excited for is, um, you know, if if things work out, is that, um, you know, Stephanie's pregnant is yes. is one thing. If people don't know that, she's she's pregnant. And um, but what I'm hoping is that this will translate into the rolling into the Vancouver Olympics. That there'll be something really interesting that happens there if they can continue kind of growing this audience associated with Twitter and the square and that kind of thing. How there does might be Stephanie cool being stuff. pregnant correlate to the Vancouver Olympics? Well, if she's, if she takes time off, oh, okay. I don't know how long she'll be off and, and you know, if that will, you know, if she takes a year or two off yeah. then then that's probably not going to happen. But she's been, the reason I say that is because she's been the KGW Olympic anchor for, I don't know, the past three Olympics, mm-hmm. maybe three or four. She always goes yeah. to the Olympics. And so I'm really interested to see how what they've developed with the square kind of translates into that larger stage where she's kind of the, the anchor there. Maybe but we'll no, they're talk do, to they're her doing a- next month about that when she's on the show. There we yeah, go. <laughs> maybe should. I want to cover curling. If you can get me an in to cover curling at the Vancouver Olympics, I'd really appreciate that. We'll talk to her about that. Maybe mm-hmm. you could just come be in the studio audience that night. Okay. Yeah, yeah I could probably do it. Maybe the roads will be okay by then. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> maybe things will have thawed, not be maybe, frozen completely. Maybe my neighborhood will have thawed by the 16th. You know, I didn't wear my full-on snow boots tonight because of the Thanami, but I still had to go with some nice wintry, furry suede things because I'm not, <laughs> I'm not ready to move back to the little high heels and whatnot. It's just too cold out there still. So for anyone who listens to this podcast who is not in Portland, we had our worst blizzard since uh, 1960. Since 1968. Eight. 68 yeah. so so we've been snowed in for for a week a full, and, full and by week. snowed in that means we can still get out of our house it, it's not like snowed in the midwest where you've like six feet of well, snow we don't, covering your door we don't have this weather in the city of portland therefore the city of portland owns like one snow plow yes and, <laughs> and, and a, a sand truck. very pleasant hello to my friend eric who yeah. who runs runs the, the snow one plow. snow plow or the de-icer yeah, or the salt It's truck, not like yeah. the Midwest or Buffalo, New York or something. It's like Thank we're you not for clearing this, some so. roads, Eric. 